Hello everyone. It's Tuesday, February 10th, 2015. Now walking the big guy. And it's about a quarter of eight. Do they still say that anymore? And uh, the weather's so uh, nice, so warm. Uh, I almost want to do a video just for that's own for its own sake. Uh, it's so hard to keep my hand out of my pocket or out of gloves while uh, I'm on these dog walks lately. So it's a good thing I have a lot to talk about. The Pipulate project is going about as wonderfully as I could imagine. I'm doing day after day, night after night, long hours after a full day of thinking and coding, there's as much thinking as there is actual coding, I put in nearly a full night as well, going to bed at 2, 3, sometimes 4 a.m. I can't keep that up anymore since I'm back to the Flying Point Digital office, but I made so much progress now I can ride that momentum. Everything is fresh in my head and it takes less thinking and contemplation to be productive and get results. And pretty soon I'll be at that point where I'm getting increasing returns, compounding returns on my work. And uh, I'm working out some of the final problem problems before I'm at that point where I'm just making function after function and custom behavior or custom data collector after custom data collector. And uh, those problems are those of site crawling, which I've talked about in prior videos, but also scheduling. And I've got some wonderful ideas and I'm almost as pumped about the scheduler as I am about the crawler because of some of the innovative aspects of it. What aspects can be innovative in a scheduler, you ask? Well, let's start with the fact that it's going to be able to run from either the tiny Linux virtual machine, which is like a 20 megabyte download to get a full Linux server on your desktop, be it Mac, uh, Windows, or another Linux machine. And you can just keep that running on your desktop and it can be the scheduler. A little bit fragile, brittle, you close out of it and the scheduling job stops. Well, you can use... Uh, the main Pipulate server, which I'll make available to a limited number of people. Uh, or you can get yourself a cloud server like the Amazon or Rackspace uh, or Microsoft Azure or whatever they call the Google one. Basically any cloud server uh, that supports you know, any sort of Linux is going to be able to be a uh, Pipulate scheduling server with uh, relative ease. But probably most exciting to me is that the Raspberry Pi, uh, specifically the 2, which is coming in, Element 14 contacted me and asked me if I'd like to do another unboxing video since I have like a million view video out on the Raspberry, the original Pi, and uh, I'm one of the ones you find when you go looking for unboxing uh, videos on the Pi, so I'll have that coming in soon, and that's a $35 computer. So you pay $35, you plug in an SD card, you plug it into the back of your uh, Wi-Fi router at home, bam, you've got a Pipulate scheduling server. Uh, or the CU box, the Q box, it costs about $130 to $150 for the high-end ones, and they're just a little box about yay big, and I ordered one of them, and that's coming in, it's being shipped, I got the notification, it's uh, been shipped from Israel, you buy a little $150 device and ship it all the way from Israel, but anyway, I'm pretty uh, excited about that one, because unlike the Pi, which you have to kind of buy extra housing or have it exposed, or it's fun, you know, it's uh, part of the maker community, but if you want to slick little box plugged into the back of your home router uh, pipulating for you. The Q box is a nice little one to use. And so these uh, boxes, these tiny servers on the, oh, you could also use localhost, just your main native machine, be it Windows or Mac, it doesn't matter. That's different from the virtual machine solution. Uh, the virtual machine solution opens a piece of software on your desktop, requires no install, but it's only working so long as you keep that uh, 
little open box on your desktop of the virtual server. Uh, but if you turn your native uh, laptop or desktop machine into a uh, Pipulate server, uh, it'll run all the time for you, but if you turn your machine off, it'll stop the scheduling. So it's best to use some sort of either cloud server or uh, micro server uh, solution so that it's running all the time. Uh, running all the time, you say, doing the scheduling, uh, plugged into the back of my router. Doesn't that mean I have to go punching firewall ports open using the router software to make a uh, uh, network uh, mapping rules? Nope, because the way you give access to your server is simply to share a Gmail address uh, into your document that's set up for scheduling and your server will have access to that same Gmail address. So when you first uh, plug one of these things on in or set it up, you go to a web form if you're at home you would probably go to pipulate.local or uh, a local host, call in 8080, something like that. And uh, a configuration screen will pop up asking for the Gmail username and login. Now I've always been hesitant to do this, but the scheduling servers is gonna need more reliable login access than I've uh, accomplished with OAuth 2 on the uh, current uh, Pipulate uh, setup. So the scheduling servers will get a username and password and you can mitigate security a little bit by uh, setting up uh, double verify and then getting the temporary passwords from Google that they give out on a per app basis for apps that still require uh, username and password to work and you don't want to give it your main one. Google has a pretty nice solution there. Uh, it's like the system for getting temporary credit card numbers to do transactions on the net. Same idea. It's almost the same as OAuth. It's like uh, it's like a token uh, that can be revoked by you anytime going in without having to change your main uh, password. But at any rate, I'll do my best to uh, encrypt it on the drive. Maybe I'll just store it in the temp directory so every time uh, you reboot it has to be, it gets lost and you have to provide it again. I'll have some solution to make, uh, to make you not have to worry about it. But once the server has access to that Gmail uh, account, it not only has access to that email, it has access to uh, its own documents and any documents you share that email address in on. Okay, so the Pipulate server now can, on some uh, frequent interval, probably once every 10 minutes, go in and see all the jobs that need to be run and do the exact same thing as clicking the Pipulate bookmarklet for each document. And in that way, the jobs will be run on every interval it comes in and does that. Now, what if uh, it's an hourly uh, interval that it should be processed and the Pipulate server is coming in once every 10 minutes. Well, the beautiful thing is that there is no configuration necessary at all beyond email uh, login on the uh, server because all the job uh, definitions are in the Google spreadsheet that gets Pipulated. Uh, what's even better is it's hardly even uh, configuration uh, at, at all in there. Beyond the uh, the rows that represent the job, the metrics that are being collected, you know, one row might be, you know, Twitter uh, usernames and uh, the follower counts, so that every time the job runs, it gets the new list of follower counts or YouTube videos and, and uh, view counts uh, or YouTube uh, channels and, and subscribers. Uh, so if you want to collect that hourly and the Pipulate server is coming in and hitting the bookmarklet uh, every 10 minutes, it looks to see when the last time the job was run and if it is uh, not in the right time window, it will not actually run the job again until it gets into the right time window. And what's better still is that you can have it uh, set to process a maximum number of rows per visit. So if it comes in six times in an hour and you have six rows, you can tell it to only be able to process one row uh, 
per uh, cycle. So by the time the hour is done, it will have processed uh, one row per every 10 minutes and be completely done the job. And I like to point out that if you set such a system up for search engine position checking, uh, you can run your own little position checking server uh, without much worry about the quotas, so long as you keep your number of keywords on the uh, relatively low side. See? So if you're tracking, say, uh, 10 keywords and uh, you set it to only check two per cycle, two, four, six, eight, ten. After five cycles, it will have collected all the positions you want with one cycle to spare. Uh, and uh, and uh, it's you, you have freedom now from all the expensive uh, position monitoring uh, software utilities out there that now make you pay because these Google uh, quota limit crackdowns have made it so hard for other types of uh, web positioning software to keep working. So this, uh, this concept can be extended to all kinds of uh, data points and metrics uh, on the net. If it has API login, it could be checking your uh, bank account or your uh, stocks. Uh, if it's something where pictures get posted, it could keep checking for new pictures. And because the functions that get uh, executed are free and open source Python functions, you can just extend the system with your own functions to do things like download pictures and send it an email, check RSS feeds for new articles and send it an email. And uh, there's all kinds of neat little side benefits. Even without programming anything having to do with email, you can set one of these uh, documents to email you anytime it gets changed as a built-in standard function of Google Docs so that whenever Pipulate runs a job, you get notified. And this all just, you know, goes on. I could keep describing additional wonderful benefits of this, like to keep your uh, own personal Pipulate server from being abused, you can tell it to only be able to process documents that are owned by some other small list of email addresses, which you can in turn keep in a Google spreadsheet for easy management. So I guess I'll have to stop myself there. I could talk about this all night and Cecil's doing his business, so I have to stop anyway. Uh, thanks for joining me. Thanks for all your patience for the people who have been uh, waiting through my long uh, dog walking videos uh, for going the actual coding sessions, which I hope to get back to soon. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. And as usual, if you know anyone who should be following along, now's a great time to join in because uh, Pipulate is going to start really taking form and be useful to people on a day-to-day -day basis. Thanks for joining me. Hope to talk to you soon. And don't forget to subscribe.